the ENIAC. Almost everyone in our field has heard of it. Hardly anyone is left who saw it in operation. And few have truly understood it. My name is Brian Stewart. I'm a professor at Drexel University, and I've been researching the ENIAC for four years. In this exhibit, we see not only a 3D model of the ENIAC, but also a pulse level simulator of the machine. Here we see that simulator as it's computing a simple number theoretic problem. It's looking for all three digit numbers that are equal to the sum of the cubes of the digits. And as we can see here, there are four such numbers, 153, 370, 371, and 407. Now, we're going to look a little bit at how the ENIAC works here. The primary computation in the machine takes place in the accumulators. There are 20 such units in the machine, and each accumulator holds 10 decimal digits and a sign. And each digit is implemented by a 10-stage ring counter, as we can see in this figure right here. Now, the 10-stage ring counter is driven by pulses that arrive over a trunk line. So if I am receiving pulses from another unit, then those pulses get added to the value that are stored in this unit. And as you might guess, there's a carry bit that is set that causes a one to be added to the next column over. Now what's interesting is how does it read them out? How does it read the digits out? And it does so as illustrated in this figure right here by sending 10 pulses to each of the digits. Now that of course will cause the ring counter to cycle through all 10 positions back to its starting point. At some point along the way it will flip the carry bit as the pulse goes from the 9 position back to the 0 position. When the carry bit is flipped it changes the routing of a group of 9 pulses. Those nine pulses will either give you on one output the number stored in the accumulator or nine minus the number stored in the accumulator. And this allows us to do subtraction in the machine. So we will illustrate that in the simulator. So here in the simulator we have the accumulators going from the second unit through the eighth unit in this portion of the machine. This, by the way, is uh, what you would see looking into the machine in the back left. The item you see in the lower left hand corner, this is a representation of what was called the portable control station. It was a handheld unit that you could carry around with you in the machine and use it for debugging purposes. And we currently have this set up to, every time we push, push a pulse button, to carry out one addition times worth of activity. So let's do that. And after a few pushes, we now have a value stored in one of the accumulators. We push the button again, and we now have uh, another value stored in two of the other accumulators. We can see in that first accumulator the value 15. The lights as you can see are representative of each digit and the values are from 0 to 9 going from bottom to top. The other two accumulators each have the value 27 in them. Now the next thing I'm going to do is switch the machine so that each time I push the pulse button I'll get one pulse time, 20 of which make up an addition time. And we will watch as the number is read out of the accumulator on the left. Its value goes to one of the other two accumulators, and the complement of the value goes to the other two accumulators. And so if we issue the pulse button, you can see the computations taking place. And you'll notice, by the way, that we're carrying out the addition and the subtraction in parallel. And what we now have is the 15 that we started with in the first accumulator. The second accumulator has the sum 42 and the third accumulator has the difference 12.
So this gives you a little idea of what you would see in this exhibit on the ENIAC. If you're interested in seeing more, go to this website right here and you can download the simulator, you can read a fair amount of documentation including some papers published in the proceedings of the IEEE. Thank you.